Hey everybody, it's a hot, hot day today in June and uh, we're about 11 days away from summer, the first day of summer. So I'm shooting this video to you. Um, I just wanted to shoot this video to you because, uh, you know, I'm just doing this video on keeping hydrated and, uh, you know, keeping out of the sun. So um, I'm just giving people a little advice now. Being a personal support worker, um, I would say that the two more categories uh, for people who are at risk out in the sun are young children, infants, and also our lovely senior citizens, our lovely elderly people who are at risk. Um, and not just that, um, for, for heat and dehydration uh, mainly. So let's start with uh, young children, infants. Um, yeah, um, as responsible adults, even if we have young children, we should uh, mind our children, uh, especially when they're out in the sun. Now, when you're young, your skin's developing. Um, it's very important to pick out a proper sunscreen for our children. Um, if you don't know what would be appropriate, talk to a pharmacist or talk to your family doctor. But if you're going to a place like Shoppers Drug Mart or Rexdal, talk to a cosmetician um, and they'll probably have a good idea um, on what might be good for them as well as you, which I'm moving into my second category, which is middle-aged adults. Um, same thing though too, you know, sunscreen, lots of good hydration, same with the infants. Um, you got to keep everyone hydrated, um, especially since, you know, the sun has changed ever since our grandparents were young. You know, the environment has changed. It's getting hotter. You know, the pollution is getting worse. You know, the population's getting bigger. Everything's contributing to, you know, us getting a bad heat wave. Uh, we're in the year of El Nino. We had a bad winter. Um, you know, it's going to be a bad summer from the looks of it. It's going to be dry and hot. And, you know, and even Al Alberta, too, they just had huge wildfires starting up in California also. I'm very concerned. Even especially the other global stuff I keep seeing, though, too. You know, there's a flood in Paris, like, in the last week, too. The worst in 30 years. And, um... Just the environment's changing, you know. You know, we got to watch out for ourselves. But uh, making sure we keep our exposure to the sun limited. Um, if you're going to wear sunscreen, make sure you reapply it if you're going into a pool um, because it will wash off. Um, making sure we keep hydrated, you know, lots of water. I have two bottles of water with me today, plus my water here, you know, I have. I'm going to finish this up and then I'll probably crack open my other bottle and refill this. Um, you know, I stay hydrated too because I'm out all day long, you know, I got to, you know, or else I'm thirsty. Um, also another uh, side note though too, if you feel hungry, um, it might be your body telling you that you are dehydrated or starting to get dehydrated. So before you pop a piece of food in your mouth, try to have a glass of water. Um, and um, it depends on your preference though too. Some people say cold water. Now cold water, uh, extreme cold water, your body will heat that up to burn calories, which is really good. But you know, just room temperature water is good. Um, you know, you won't be, your body won't be working up a sweat trying to burn off the, try to cool down the water you put in. Um, remember, the human body is about almost 80% water. Um, you know, we're like our own filter. We, uh, we, we filter in water, we filter out water, and we filter out water um, by urinating and having bowel movements, most importantly. People don't actually know that. Uh, when you have a bowel movement, you actually lose water as well um, because, you know, what is that? It's basically water, you know. Uh, people don't seem to identify with that. They seem to identify with them losing water as urinating, but that's uh, only one of two pieces. And the other ways you lose water is, uh, you know, you might, uh, if you throw something up to, you could lose something that way as well. Um, and uh, another way we lose water, and one of the most important ways we lose water is when we sweat and uh, we perspire. And people also seem to forget that too. Your body is losing water, especially when you exercise. Um, people don't actually realize that also too sometimes i think people seem to think that they uh they just sweat and uh you know nothing happens your body's actually losing water because it's trying to cool itself down that's the most important part that's why we drink waters to rehydrate ourselves but then people think oh i'm just going to sweat it out again who know it no, that's not true your your body's getting rid of the old water it's getting rid of the salts it's getting rid of the nasty stuff and that's why we sweat and that's why we stink you know what i mean so there you go um, moving on to what I want to also talk to you too, especially uh, as a personal support worker, um, you know, I see a lot of seniors um, and this is a good one too. Um, whenever I visit their homes, they shut the air conditioning off because they feel they're too cold and uh, it's not just because that, you know, they feel oh, it's nice and warm outside, I'll go out in the sun or I'll just let myself bask in the house. That's not a good idea. 
Um, what seniors don't realize though is, you know, they're just like everything else. And same thing with the smelling part too. They'll say, oh, I don't stink, I don't perspire. That's not true either. As we deteriorate, it happens even more. So you're gonna sweat and you're going to perspire more. You're going, to, you're at risk more when you're older. So, um, you know, I'll give you an example. You know, you go to someone's home who's a senior, they turn off the air, they say, oh, I'm too cold. And they're wearing sweaters and then they shut the care off, they take them off. And then the house gets extremely hot. And then obviously they're not gonna drink water because they don't feel the need to be thirsty. The, you know, that's what gets me, you know, if you know someone who's a senior citizen, you live with them, you visit them, you know, that, that sort of thing, you know, make sure that they have plenty of water to drink, make sure you tell them that you have to keep hydrated in this weather, and if they do go out in the sun, make sure that they do have a proper sunscreen as well, because just like infants, seniors' skin is very thin and fragile, and it is at ex just as high exposure to UV radiation as our own, even much more so. So, you know, and they can actually get dark pretty fast. Trust me, I've seen seniors get dark pretty fast. Um, and it's not good for them as well because they're already dealing with skin difficulties as well. So, um, you know, that's just my best advice is make sure they stay safe. And, you know, some seniors will feel feel really hot as well too. It's the opposite effect happens. It's just the, the, it's the medications they take, it's their condition, it's the water pills that they're on. So water pills, that makes them feel cold because, you know, when, you know, you got water retention when you're older in some cases, you know, you take, take things like Warfarin, for example. Um, and, you know, it just, uh, you know, it uh, drives the water out of you. So you're racing to the toilet, pissing like a racehorse. So, well, you know, what can you do? and then it brings down their circulation even more, so that's why they feel cold. So, hey, what can you do? But um, it's important for seniors to stay hydrated and to have some sunscreen on when they're out and stay hydrated in general. So, um, word of warning though too, if they are on water pills and they have to stick to a certain amount of water per day, um, max it out and then just do what you gotta do and stay out of the sun. So, my best piece of advice. But for anybody out there, um, like I said, if you're out during the day, um, take some sunscreen with you, reapply it, especially if you're going in and out of a pool or water. Um, you know, just make sure that you wear something that can reflect the sun, like some decent colors, nothing too dark. Um, I should talk, actually. <laughs> um, make sure that, uh, most importantly, these are the things that people actually forget, you know, besides sunscreen and drinking water, keep hydrated. A pair of sunglasses. I see too many people going like this when they're on the road, driving around like this, and you know, having their shields down and blah blah blah. You get a pair of sunglasses, people. Seriously, if you're driving around, you know, especially a good pair of polarized sunglasses that you can see everything. You know, you're doing yourself a favor because if that sun's out and it's at its peak and you crash, it's 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 gonna be even more costlier one than a twenty dollar pair of cheap ass sunglasses you're gonna get. And most importantly to my bald brothers out there like myself who shave their heads or who just buzz their heads or who have a little amount of hair, make sure you cover your head with a, with a hat if you're gonna be out from the sun for a long time. Because also, you know, not having hair, um, you know, you're at risk for, uh, you know, the same types of things. Um, so cover your head as well. And for some people who have fairer skin if you got to cover up a little bit more by all means but also stay out of the sun as well and use hot sunscreen and drink plenty of water every category all of the above you know we have to watch ourselves people especially with mr. Sun up there being so hot nowadays so anyways folks um, remember do all with that I've said and do yourselves a favor and also if you see a senior citizen or a young infant you know, and, and they're, uh, they're alone and they're dehydrated, you know, do what you can for them. Um, and also on one last note, people who leave their pets in their cars. This is a big one I hate. Okay, don't bring your pet out. Either take it with you or either you take it with you where you gotta, you take it with you with you where you gotta go. You don't leave it in the car or you leave the pet at home or with someone for the day. Because I have seen a couple pets get locked up in the car. Now the car turned off is like an inferno. The pet has no water, whether it be a, a, a dog or even you know, take your cat out for some reason. The car is like an inferno. You got no water, no air. It's like, a, it's gonna heat up. And even when I got into my car though too, I have to turn it on for a few minutes and let the air go because it's like an inferno in here, especially with the sun. So, you know, your little loved one is gonna get, uh, is gonna get uh, you know heat stroke and overheated. You know, would you leave a baby in the car? 
Would you leave like a little child in there unattended? No, you wouldn't. So why would you do that to a dog especially? These people, come on, people smarten up, seriously. All right, leave the pet at home or take it with you and or just leave it outside in a shady spot, you know, and bring a little bowl of water for it. But don't leave the, the damn dog in the car, even if it's just for a few minutes, because a few minutes could be the difference between life and death. You wouldn't leave a baby in the car and you wouldn't leave a senior citizen in the car all unattended. You know what I mean? I'm just throwing that in there because I'm just trying to make you guys think. If you don't believe me, then why don't you turn off your car on the hottest day, park yourself out in the sun, and see how long you last in the car. And then think about that. All right? But the difference is, you can pick up a bottle of water. The dog can't. All right? Think about that one. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good one. Be safe. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.